get really excited about vegetable varieties. Every year I add some new ones to my collection. If I like them, I'll save seeds to replant next year. Some of these varieties have been growing in my Zone 5 garden since I moved here. Each year I participate in seed swaps to add fun new things to my collection. This year I'm working together with my sisters-in-law to plant two separate gardens that our families will share. My current garden is very limited on water. We don't get much rain and our well sometimes goes dry. It has a lot of grass competition from the neighbor's pasture, so we rely heavily on different kinds of mulch. It's also in a cold pocket where we typically have less than 100 days between frosts. Last year, we only had 80 days between hard freezes. The other garden space we're planting this year is mostly raised beds with a more ample water supply. It also has a slightly longer season, even though it's less than a mile away. I dedicate a lot of space to root crops. Since they can store all winter long, I sometimes plant turnips, but I'm probably going to skip them this year since they aren't our favorite and will be somewhat limited on space. For beets, I'm going to be planting chioga, cylindra, heirloom yellow mangle, and a few albinos. For carrots, we'll be planting black nebula, cosmic purple, nantes, and danvers with just a few leaner whites. For radishes, we'll be focusing on the 18 jurors and a spring radish mix that has 15 different heirloom varieties. We'll also plant just a few black Spanish that are winter storage radish. And for parsnips, we'll be planting Harris model. Potatoes are always a priority for us. They always produce even in a poor season and are resistant to rabbits and deer. They last many months stored at room temperature in a dark place. Everyone enjoys them, and they can be prepared in a variety of ways. So this year we'll be planting Huckleberry Gold, Yukon Gold, Russet, Red, and Purple. Sweet potatoes are pretty marginal in our climate, so I don't dedicate much space to them. I've had the best luck with growing them in containers so I can bring them in the greenhouse or even in house when it gets too cold. This year we'll be growing an unknown white variety that we grew last year, and probably Myanmar purple. For onions, we'll be growing lots of red Weathersfield, which is one of the best red storage types. We'll also be growing yellow Spanish, New York early, red of Florence, and evergreen bunching onions. Those are a green onion that comes up every year in our garden all by itself. Tomatoes. I grow about 50% sauce tomatoes, and most of those are San Marzano. I plant smaller quantities of slicing and cherry tomatoes. And yes, I know I'm a little carried away with the number of tomato varieties on this list. There are just so many exciting heirlooms available. Some years our tomatoes don't get a chance to ripen on the vine, like last summer when we only had 80 days between hard freezes. We simply to pick them green before the first frost in the fall and bring them inside to ripen. The San Marzanos especially ripen well this way. This year we'll be growing San Marzano paste, purple Russian paste, black brandywine slicing, pink brandywine slicing, striped brandywine slicing, Kellogg's breakfast slicing, Costaludo Genovese, which can be for slicing or sauce, Golden King of Siberia for slicing, Black Beauty for slicing, Great White for slicing, Dr. Whitey's Yellow for slicing, Silvery Fir Tree, which is a determinate early red slicer, Black Crim for slicing, Pink Berkeley Tie-Dye slicing, Violet Jasper, which is a prolific salad tomato, Gardener's Delight, which is a red cherry, Gold Nugget, which is a yellow cherry, Green Grape, which is a green cherry, Black Cherry, Rainbow Cherry Mix from Botanical Interests, Tiny Tin, which is a miniature cherry tomato, perfect for container gardening, and Principe Borges, which is a small salad or sun-drying tomato. Also in the tomato family, we'll be growing lychee berries, chichi colite berries, you can check out my blog post on those, purple tomatillos, and queen of melanalco tomatillos. For peppers, I'll mostly be planting the mini bell pepper mix from Baker Creek since they do so well in our short season. We'll also be planting Bulgarian carrot, which is a super hot pepper for cayenne pepper and hot sauce. 
natapinos, which are a non-spicy jalapeno that we'll put in our salsa, Czech black, which is a hot pepper for salsa, Brazilian starfish, hot for salsa, sugar rush peach, which is hot that we'll use for hot sauce and for salsa, cayenne for cayenne pepper, ancho, which is mildly hot and will go in our salsas, Zulu bell pepper, which is a black sweet pepper, violet sparkle sweet pepper, corbachi sweet pepper, marsoni sweet pepper, buna mulata, which is a hot pepper, Jimmy Nardello Italian frying pepper, which is sweet, long red sweet pepper, Amish pimento, luchara paprika pepper, and orange bell pepper. Squash. Squash is another area where I tend to get a little carried away. I can't say no to all the fun heirlooms available. This year we'll be growing Costata Romanesco Zucchini, Saffron Yellow Summer Squash, Pattison Stree Melange Summer Squash, Benning's Green Tint Patty Pan, which is a summer squash, Black Beauty Zucchini, Lady Godiva Winter Squash, which is a naked seeded variety that we grow for the edible seeds that don't have a hole. We also have a blog post on that. We'll be growing Bitterroot Buttercup, Gerardale Amish Pie Squash, Sweet Meat Oregon Homestead Strain, Red Curry, Tahitan Melon Squash, Baby Pam Pie Pumpkin, Striped Acorn, Waltham Butternut, Big Max, Gete Yokosomen, Galu Dia Signs, Iran, Illinois Kusha, Sibley, Winter Luxury Pie Pumpkin, Hubbard Squash, and Rouge Vifdian Tampanez, which is a Cinderella pumpkin. Melons tend to be pretty iffy in our short season. The most dependable for me have been Blacktail Mountain Watermelon, Cream of Saskatchewan Watermelon, and Jenny Lind Musk Melon. The others I grow will set fruit in a good year, but won't have enough time in a bad year. Besides the three I mentioned, I'll be growing Royal Golden Watermelon, Moon and Stars Watermelon, Golden Midget Watermelon, Sugar Baby Watermelon, Bidwell Cassava Cantaloupe, Hales Cantaloupe, Kajari Melon, and Delistala Table Melon. For cucumbers, we'll be growing Suyo Long Cucumber, which doesn't need a pollinator. We'll be growing lemon cucumbers and then some different pickling cucumber varieties, including Delicatess and Market More. For salad, we'll be growing Wild Garden Siberian Kale Mix, which does really, really well in our climate. We'll also be growing a little bit of walking stick kale and scarlet kale. For lettuce, we'll be growing Four Lunch Loss Romaine, Winter Density Romaine, Crisp Mint Romaine, and Gully's Favorite Butterhead. And then in smaller quantities, we'll grow some Tango Loose Leaf, Paris Island Cause, Butter King, and Lalo Rasa Loose Leaf. For spinach, we'll have Giant Winter and Mountain Spinach. Other salad greens will be Japanese Giant Red Mustard and Benhushi Mizuna. For our Zone 5 Corn Patch, uh, we usually grow a lot of Painted Mountain. It's the easiest corn to grow in our area. But we're going to be short on space this year, so we're probably going to skip that. We use it for cornmeal and livestock feed. But corn is fairly inexpensive to buy compared to some of the other things that we grow and want to make space for. So we'll still be growing Orchard Baby and Double Standard Sweet Corn, as well as some Dakota Black Popcorn. Peas do very well in our cool summer nights, so they always get lots of space in our garden. This year we'll be growing Caribbean Dimasan Snow Pea, Sugar Snap Snow Pea, Purple Potted Snow Pea, and Field Peas. For beans, we'll be growing Dragon's Tongue Bush Bean, Black Valentine Bush Bean, Jacob's Cattle Bush Bean, Rattlesnake Pole Bean, Kentucky Wonder Pole Bean, Leonardi Pole Bean, which is a local heirloom that has been in my friend's family for years. We'll also have an heirloom pole bean mix and Marble of Venice Pole Bean. In the cabbage family, cabbages have really been a challenge in my current garden with the exception of kale. 
there's something about my soil that it just doesn't like, and it's a lot of work to get the plants to grow. We also have a lot of pest problems. For this reason, I'm not giving this plant group a lot of space this year, with the exception of cabbage itself. I'm going to be omitting broccoli and Brussels sprouts completely, since they aren't my family's favorite anyway. We're going to be growing some kohlrabi, including purple, which is an unknown variety. We think it's probably purple of Vienna, but we're not really sure. And then super schmelz, which is a giant green kohlrabi. And for cabbage, we'll be growing lots of Brunswick, which is an average sized green cabbage that's good for storage. And so far the best performer in my garden. We'll be growing smaller amounts of late flat Dutch, which is a giant storage cabbage, and Zverda's Savoy cabbage. We'll be growing a little bit of cauliflower. This year that will be Purple of Sicily and Romanesco d'Italia. Celery does really well in our climate. Um, this year we're just going to grow Red Venture. Athena cutting celery also does great in our area, but I prefer growing a full-size celery to have both the leafy tops for soup and the milder, wider stalks at the bottom. Celery does surprisingly well in my low water garden, and I always get a good crop. I usually companion plant celery with leeks, which are another zone 5 crop that just does really well in our climate. They grow much better than onions and are still usable out in the garden well into winter. This year we'll be growing King Siege. I'm sure I've missed a few things on this list. I omitted flowers and herbs, since that would make the list a little too long. Share in the comments what garden zone you're in and which vegetable varieties do best in your area.